Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And I, once again, I'm in here cooking. Today I am making breakfast. I got a omelet there of egg whites and spinach. Uh, that has been my favorite thing to eat now recently. And I am pretty much done with it. So I'm just gonna let it cook over here, just cool off a little bit. And, uh, and tell you guys, you know, that I just really appreciate the support that this show has been getting. A lot of my, you know, videos get like two, three, maybe five or 10 views. Uh, so to see most of these videos of the Venom Vlog so far uh, get over like 20 views, some of them, uh, and even the first one up to like 150 views, it means a lot to me. So I really appreciate that very much. And uh, and feel free to comment if, if you have anything to say you want to add about the Venom movie. Uh, if you have any diet routines or anything that's worked out for you uh, that you want to drop in the, in the comments, um, I definitely could use the help in that regard. I think I'm getting to a stalemate where I'm just eating like the same things all the time, even though they're healthier than what I ate before. And then I'm doing the same amount of exercise, but uh, I noticed I've dropped a few pounds, which is great. And I've been keeping it off, so, which is really great. Uh, but we still have a long way to go. We got October is still like 11 months away for this movie to come out. And I just want to make sure I keep everything going uh, up until then. Um, but today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the IMDb page again. And we're going to look at the director, the writers, everyone who's working on the movie from behind the scenes who are listed so far. And some of their previous work and kind of what I'm excited about with some of these people. And with some of them I may have some reservations. Uh, but we'll get into that very shortly. So thanks so much for tuning in. And don't forget the giveaways. Make sure you watch this video all the way through. We're going to give away some comic books as well. And I know we already did one giveaway in the intro, but I'm going to give away something extra. I went to the comic store this week and I picked up Venom Inc. number two, and I found a couple of other books that uh, it's actually a book I was collecting for a while and just lost track of. And I honestly thought it might have been canceled, but I was happy to see that there were still some new issues out, which is a book called Spider Gwen. Um, I'm actually really a fan of the art in this book, and uh, and I think the concept is pretty neat. It's uh, doesn't always grab me. Not every issue hooked me in, but I, enough to keep with it. I think this and All New Wolverine were like two of my, you know, the books that I kept going back to in the Marvel Universe that I might lose for a couple issues just because of money and then come back in and grab it when I could. But when I saw that they're doing a story with Venom and it's called Gwenom, it just sounded so like 70s cheesy, like Silver Age cheesy that I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. Gwenom, like it just sounds so hokey and fun. Uh, and then sure as anything, it was. It was actually, it was kind of a fun book. So I'm going to give part one out. I have part two. I'll give that out in another episode. Uh, but since, you know, we're here, we got an extra uh, few codes to give away. There you go. We gave one away in the intro, and then now you can have that one. So everything's on screen, how to get it. Uh, enjoy yourself. First person to get it gets it. So make sure you put that code in immediately. And, uh, and then comment down below if you got it. And if you enjoyed the book, let me know. All right. So one thing I want to talk about is the behind the scenes of Venom. Because, you know, lately people saw Woody Harrelson, they're, it turned a lot of heads. Because if you look at my channel, I'm a very small YouTube channel. And I put up a video reacting to Tom Hardy's training video, I think like 10 or 12 days before mass outlets got it. Like, no one is paying attention to this movie. Um, I've been, curiosity has taken over from me about a month and a half ago. And I started looking for stuff on this movie. And I said, you know, I'm going to do this vlog. Venom's always been that character that inspired me before to work out. Now he's doing it again. And and coincidentally, they're making a movie of it. So why don't I do what a lot of YouTubers that I like do and track the course of a movie over the course of like a year or so and just see if I can do it. Because, you know, a lot of times I have trouble on here sticking to something because of time and interest and money. So like Transformers in my car, I, I stopped doing it because I don't have any money for that. And then even with Gotham City Bricks lately, I'm just behind on them. I have some recorded. I just got to post them up for you guys and finish editing them. Um, but so so for this, I'm just like, wow, I like this I could maybe go the distance with because I like Venom, I love the character, and I like Tom Hardy. And I was interested immediately. And then when they started bringing in Michelle Williams and Jen Jenny Slate, Riz Ahmed, I really started getting interested in this. And I want to know what is pulling these actors in. Like, obviously, Ruben Fleischer, he's a good director. He's made some good stuff, you know, and we'll talk about some of the stuff he's worked on. But usually at this early in the stage, either the concept art is like blown away that the director's pitch, Ruben Fleischer's pitch, maybe when he meets with these actors, he's able to sell them big time. Um, or maybe the script's amazing. And uh, and how weird would that be? If, if like a decent script just got in the hands of these actors and they're like, wow, this is neat. What is this? And they're like, oh, it's based on a comic book. And they're like, what comic book? And they're like, oh, it's a Spider-Man villain. And they're like, what? Like, I just keep imagining this scenario where these actors are getting this script and going like, 
that's a good role. I want to do that. Like, and then talk to the director and directors, like, here's how we're going to do it. And we're going to flesh it out. And we're going to, I'm going to, this is how I want to shoot you. And I, you know, I want to give Venom power in the scene. And, you know, I just, I just think of all these, cause I've been in rooms and during situations like this, where people have been pulled into things and, and, you know, and, and, and sold on a movie. And, uh, and now I'm just like thinking of all the things that could possibly be happening. But one thing I'm thinking is that the script is really good. So we talked about in our previous episode that there's, you know, a great cast being built. And now we have Woody Harrelson being rumored, but I think he might he might join up. I'm not sure, but he has a past with the director in Zombieland, so I'm thinking he will. So I figured in this episode, we'll just look at some of the people behind the scenes and some of the stuff we've done. And since we talked about casting, I want to take a quick second to look at uh, John Popsidera, who is the uh, who is the casting guy. I think he's the casting person in charge. I mean, I'm sure he has like a group with him and they have people that reach out to agencies and agencies are reaching out to them and as people like Woody Harrelson and, and even Michelle Williams and Jenny Slate and as these actors Riz Ahmed are getting attached to it they're like we want to be a part of this like you know like it, show us a script oh it's decent okay yeah like I got an actress for you I got an actor for you and usually that stuff goes through the casting so he is a casting director in Los Angeles here at, uh, where I live and obviously, and he's done some interesting movies. One of them is Jacob's Ladder, which is being remade. He didn't, I don't think he did the original one, but he did the remake. And I was actually invited to a screening of that recently, like a really low key. The movie was like, you know, not finished or anything. And uh, I did, I couldn't go because of work. And Jacob's Ladder is one of my all time favorite movies. I love that movie so much. It's so creepy and weird. And apparently he cast the new one. And from what I saw of the cast, that's going to be the new one. Uh, some no names and things. It, it looked like genuinely decent so um i think this guy has a pretty good eye uh, for for the most part as far as casting and that's why this cast is intriguing me so much is because uh i think because of this guy and his work so he's also done dunkirk recently cast that movie um even stuff like power rangers and fate of the furious so he's worked on like big budget you know big things he's also found these like no-name actors to come in on Power Rangers and play those parts, um, which I thought was great. Uh, and that movie actually turned out to be okay. Like, I was surprised by that movie. My, my expectations were really low, but it turned out okay. Um, unfortunately, he also cast Gods of Egypt, which, hey, you know, nobody's perfect, right? Uh, but that movie had a bunch of white people in it that didn't need to be in that movie. Uh, but still, uh, he, but otherwise, pretty good resume. So, we have him on the on the directing uh, on the uh, casting director side, uh, but then we also on the producing side we have Avi Arad, Amy Pascal, who I'm not a big fan of those people, um, and I've worked at Sony before, and it's just I was there in 2007 after the Spider-Man 3 thing, and after that made a ton of money, and where they, where they were going to go with Spider-Man 4, and all the scrapped Spider-Man 4. There's a lot of people making videos now about things that didn't make it into the Spider or the Spider-Man 4 movie that never happened with Sam Raimi and all that stuff and I was there at that time like working on different projects freelancing and things like that and uh and I you know I just I don't know I didn't have a lot of good experiences uh there which is unfortunate because I think a lot of the stuff they have the properties to and work on and a lot of people I met day to day were great so it was just you know uh, it's it's tough uh, at any place when when the, the higher ups can sometimes be maybe not bad people by any means i'm not going that far i'm just saying they're very business driven and i guess you have to be to run a company and a studio especially so and i just don't have a business mindset i'm more of like a weirdo creative guy so i don't i don't understand that mentality and so i kind of shy away from it so but anyway they they've put together i mean we Avi Arad, you know, love him or hate him, has put together the X-Men movies, um, put together a lot of the Spider-Man Sam Raimi films, so definitely has done a lot for comic book movies uh, in the, like, early 2000s. I think also Blade, uh, I think he, you know, produced and stuff, and I love those movies, at least the first two. Um, Amy Pascal, she ran, you know, uh, Sony for a while, and then now I think she stepped down and someone else is running it, uh, and then she's doing, like, producing stuff between Marvel and, and, and Sony and stuff. Uh, but uh, Matt Tomac, he's one I, I'm not fully familiar with so I'm going to click on him real quick and check out his his kind of resume um it looks like right off the bat he uh worked on Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle I guess he's doing the new Silver and Black movie which is the Silver Sable and Black Cat spin-off Spider-Man like it's if Venom's a success I think that one's going to get like 100% the go forward if it isn't already in production um I hope that movie doesn't really happen, but at the same time, I don't know, those are interesting characters, and if you make a low-budget, gritty movie like they're doing with Venom, I could possibly watch it. Uh, but Sinister Six, like, all that stuff that Sony's announcing that I'm not really interested in, he's he's on all of them. Um, and I think that's because he worked on The Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2, 
and unfortunately those movies are hot hot garbage i cannot say one good thing about those movies not one and I, except maybe emma stone as gwen stacy but other than that i can't say anything um so doesn't have a resume that blows me away but at the same time i feel like everyone is could be perfect for a project you know like if someone doesn't do something that i like i know other people out there do like it so it's all you know subjective opinions and stuff so i believe though that everyone out there who's creating stuff will at least make one thing i like and for all i know you know he's working on this and he's doing everything he can to make this movie awesome because who knows i mean every one of these projects these people work on their jobs do depend on it it has to be good and so it's not like they want to do a bad job or they want to do something that will upset fans or anything like that they want to do a good job and so i'm always willing to give people a chance because i know this industry is not easy and it's not forgiving and so i try to be at least a little bit forgiving on things uh let's talk about writers real quick and then we'll talk about the director um the writing team actually they credit Todd McFarlane and Dave Michelin but they're the guys who did the comic book so they kind of get IMDb credits anyway uh, Kelly Marcel she's interesting because she I think wrote 50 shades of gray like the the movie not the the book obviously um but she uh, she wrote 50 shades of gray and then she also is a co-artistic director of the Bad Dog Theater Company which is founded in 2010 alongside Tom Hardy. So it looks like they have a, a friendship or relationship or whatever, um, but they have a business relationship working together on things. But she did Fifty Shades of Grey. She did Saving Mr. Banks and Terra Nova, the TV series. Um, so it, it's, it's interesting to go from something like Fifty Shades of Grey to this. But again, I think she made a really good foundation with this script because I've actually heard that the first draft was pretty decent. And so what happened is I think they brought in other writers to like either touch up or, you know, or just work with her on it and develop it more as new actors were coming on, as new ideas were being fleshed out. And so one of those writers was Jeff Pinkner, um, who wrote, unfortunately, The Dark Tower, which I haven't seen, but I heard from everyone I know that that movie's garbage. Uh, so when everyone tells you something, I kind of go, okay, yeah, probably, because uh, <laughs> sometimes I'll be the one person with the descending opinion, but this time I'm going to listen. Uh, but he also did uh, things like Fringe, the TV show Fringe, um, October Road, and uh, the Lost TV series and Alias. And so I liked a lot of those shows. So again, you know, everyone, it's not an easy industry and everyone deserves a second chance. And, and that's and that's just coming from me. Obviously, he didn't wrong everyone else. Probably a lot of people like the work he's done. Um, me, I'm just like, you know, oh, okay. I'll, yeah, I'm sure he did fine, you know, like, but uh, I want to see more. And then the, that's where the third writer comes in, Scott Rosenberg, who was actually written, um, he also wrote the new Jumanji movie. So you see a lot of, like, um, family-type uh, mentality here where they hire the same people and they get recycled on different projects and they're kind of like, the house writers, the, the go-to people that get on these things. Um, but he's also worked on October Road again. Um, and he wrote uh, Gone in 60 Seconds in 2000, which I actually really like that movie, and High Fidelity, um, and Disturbing Behavior, which uh, Katie Holmes was in. I love that movie. That movie is freaking awesome. Uh, and Con Air, not to mention one of my favorite shows of all time, Tales from the Crypt. So again, all three of these people, they've done things I've liked, things I haven't liked, but ultimately... They're, they got me excited for this movie. And I'm thinking the script is what's pulling a lot of these actors in. I think they did a decent job. But as always, you know, a good script doesn't mean a good movie. And a bad script doesn't mean a bad movie. What you need is a director who can pull it all in. I think Joel Schumacher said it best after he made Batman and Robin, where every movie, if it's, if it's bad, if it's universally panned and bad, it's the director's fault. But if it's good, it's everyone's fault. And I like that mentality. I like that he took ownership of basically Batman and Robin killing that Batman franchise at the time he's just like look it was my choice I made the decisions the script was good I changed things I added the color I added this and that and I was just going off notes from the studio and doing like you know just a, a fun Batman 66 live action movie because that's what I wanted to do and uh, and he's like and I realize it was the wrong choice and he goes I'll own up to that I'm the director of the movie so when something tanks just for you people out there know it's it's the director's fault and uh, and he goes and other people too to an extent but He's like, it, the director is the one sailing the ship. And if it's all good, then everyone, no one person should take credit if everything is goes well and people love the movie. And I always really liked that, what he said that. So again, having a director that could bring it all home, bring a good script, bring in good actors, tie it all together, 
We have Ruben Fleischer. I hope he can deliver. I think he can, though. He's done some very cool stuff. Zombieland, he's working on Zombieland 2. He worked on the Santa Clarita Diet, which is one of the new shows I actually am, have not seen, but I heard it was pretty good. Uh, Gangster Squad, he's worked on. Um, and uh, Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis, which uh, he did the Michael Sarah episode, which I really loved because it's really awkward and uncomfortable. Um, and so, yeah, this guy has pretty humble roots and just worked his way up, has good comedy sense, has good uh, an eye for things. And usually people who can capture comedy really well, I think also can do horror pretty well um, because I always I think there's a very thin line between the two. And, uh, and I think the right person can can sway back and forth like a pendulum in each and I think Venom is a, probably a good place for something like dark humor and then something for like real intensity and I, I think Ruben could bring that uh, with this movie and I hope he can bring that to this movie because I'm really looking forward to it well that's it for me guys thank you so much for tuning in let me know if you won the comics down in the comment section below and uh, and I'll respond say congratulations to you I hope you like them and I'll have more comics to give away in future episodes thank you again like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the future peace